but no, I thought I'd uh, ring up Jeffro and rope him in. Yeah, good on you. I don't know. I've heard most of Jeffro's stories, but just before we got on, I just started listening to a couple of them. <laughs> and I haven't heard them yet. So I'm going to be impressed because I'm normally impressed when Stephen Jeffress talks. Yeah, well, he, you know, he is a bit of a, stories, no doubt. He's an icon in the industry. <laughs> As, oh, know. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I'm so, sure if Maddie's, Maddie's listening, he's pissing himself off in a bit. <laughs> but so what I am going to do this as an interview, right? Because even if I know it'd just be a chat for us, I'm going to do this as an interview because I am recording, just to let you know. And what I might do is send that on to some of my clients and stuff and just put it on my you know, Facebook page or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. So even though recording on. this, should I, go, should I go and put pants on? <laughs> no, just. Stay comfortable. I like it like that, Jeff Rhodes. Just do not, whatever you do, let that camera move from its current position. Well, or stand you're, up. You're actually lucky One. you've got a shirt off because well, I've just um, <laughs> I've spent many a days where I've, I walk around with not much on. Just one, yeah. one so, piece of clothing on. You know, listen, between the four of us, it might be whatever rating you like, but when I put it on my website, I'd like it to be, you know, PR. You know, PG. Yeah, okay. PG. You know, I, I just saw Maddie's. I just saw Matty pop up as a something and then he popped back off okay. again. He's having a bit of fun. Are you there, Matty? There he is. Hey, boy. Hey. Do you? How you doing, mate? <laughs> ah, legend. Work, what are you doing? Boys? It all out. What's going on? Oh, we're just shooting and breezing, mate. <laughs> but we are going to listen <laughs> to the man, Jeffro. He's going to. He's about to give us a nice little uh, nice. half an hour of his time and we'll open up to questions and answers, which I'm sure you guys have got plenty of questions for a guy like Jeffro. <laughs> Maddie's got all. Maddie's already got all the answers. All right. So I tell you what. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the rest everyone on mute. This is not too much background noise. Eh? All right. Apart from actually, probably don't put Jeffro on mute. Maybe. <laughs> all right. Here we go. He's the guy I'm trying to interview. Can, so I'm just going to. Can I interview? Gonna, Matt, can I interview Maddie? Well, yeah. That's actually, we, that's we'll, not, we'll bring that up. That's probably yeah, not Q and A. That's doesn't doesn't have an order as to the Q and A. You can ask whatever you like of all of us. Okay. Cool. That's probably not PG though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we go. Um, right, so hang on. There we go. So Jeffro, I've done it again. I've muted you again. There we go. Right, we're good now. I'm getting professional with this now. So, all right. For those who aren't here at the moment, for this, for the for the average Joe punter out there listening to this later on, mate, can you give us the Stephen Jeffro story in I don't know about a minute? What do you reckon? I probably can. Um, I know that's very Macquarie. hard, but yeah. Grew, uh, grew up in Port Macquarie, got dropped multiple times as a young fella, um, <laughs> hence the uh, the head that's warped. Um, started golf when I was 10, used to caddy for my old man, but he used to use it to get on the, get on the drink. Um, so I started when I was 10. Uh, never a whole lot of skill, um, never a lot of talent. I've had to work pretty hard at what I've, what I've got. I'm not one of these natural players. Um, what to do? Traineeship at 20. So out at 23, played professional golf since then. Um, played all over the world. Probably overachieved, I would say, <laughs> um, for what I always want to get. But, um, have bet, you know, if I was to finish uh, tomorrow, I would have to say I'm pretty happy with, with my career and, and what I've been able to do. Um, from you know, just a, a young fellow from Port Macquarie. Love it. Just uh, what do you tell me? What's just an average, average punter having a crack? I'm just an yeah, average crack. guy having a crack at life. Yeah, right. I love it. It's fantastic. The let's go I there. Wish then. I, I wish I had Matty McLean's skill. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, you've been a tour pro then for how long? About 21 years. 21 yeah, years. When, when did you finish your time? Yeah. I finished, I uh, graduated at the end of 98. So I started 99 mm -hmm. was my actual first year. Yeah, so we were doing our time at the same time. I finished the end of 90. No, yeah, 99 was my first year. Yeah, you're right, since 99. I'll be, we did it at the same time. Yeah. Oh, we did it at the same time, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, it's funny how our paths aren't on the same trajectory. Yeah, well, <laughs> in terms well, of playing. Yeah, but well, having said that, that's a good example, actually. So, did you always have it in your mind that you wanted to be a tour pro, even during yeah. your traineeship? Because there's a lot of guys yeah. that, yeah, you did. So, back then, I know most of the guys that were doing a traineeship were like, yeah, I, you know, we're going to do this. Maybe half of them were, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a serious player. And it was still an option then, which yeah. is not necessarily the case anymore. You want to be a player now, you need to be tour school. And 
not so-called wasting your time for three years in a pro shop. If you want to be a player nowadays, you need to be at that high level. But yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how did you find that time? Yeah. Can can I say that's that's a bit of a myth for me, sure. and that's yeah. a myth that I wish would change because um, just because you do a traineeship, I think a traineeship, even if you're a gun player, I think a traineeship is the way to go. I would tell mm -hmm. anyone to do a traineeship. I know guys like uh, Kurt Lind. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guys, you may you may know these guys, um, boys. Kirtland, Danny Vera. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple I can think of that were in Australian teams um, and went to tour schools, and now they don't play golf anymore. Uh, they're not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not involved. Kurt's not even involved in the golf industry anymore. So either is Danny. So it's it's a bit of a myth that I I believe I believe I I always think no matter how good you are you go to a traineeship for three years you got a you got a solid craft behind you and but also you're playing trainer events so you if if you're that good you're towing them up every week and that's um there's no be, no better way to see where your games at than playing trainer events I, mm. I don't believe or you know if you extend on the pro ams but there's no no better way of knowing where you're at so I think that's okay. a bit of a myth that if you're a good player you go to Q school I I I just about everyone I tell, um, no matter how good they are, unless they're number one amateur in the world or something, unless there's something unbelievably special, I tell them to do a traineeship. Yeah, cool. I like it. Having done one myself. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah I, you're right. And it's, it's not it's as, an interesting time. You know what it's like, mate. It's not as bad as what people think. People hmm. think you're a slave. You're actually working. You know, I worked at Port Macquarie and um, where mm. a lot of guys that you, I grew up there, I, I had a lot of mates. So it was basically checking mates in. Sure, you had your, you mm. had your members that come in that were pains in the behinds, but, um, but that happens in all walks of life. And that, um, you know, obviously none of your clients, Don, um, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it just happens in all walks of life. So it was, it wasn't, for some reason they think it's, um, Young young people think it's the end of the world doing a traineeship. I'd 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 love to change that that thought pattern. Love it. So when you when you came out of your time then, how what what was the first events, the first playing that you did uh, straight out of your time? Where, um, what was, where were you? I played I played pro am. So I can remember my first pro am actually. Oh yeah, um, that sounds Michael's, like a story right there. Yeah. Where it was St Michael's Golf Club. So when I turned pro, I was off about plus three, I think. So back then, that was pretty. That was a pretty good handicap. It's not a plus three of today. Um, mm -hmm. And I was in the top ten trainees in Australia, and you know all that sort of through my through my years, and um, did very well. And I went and played St Michael's Pro Am, and I remember it was blowing a bit, and I shot two under, and I walked off and went, yeah, two under is pretty good. Well, seven under one. Um, and then there was a six and then two fives and then seven fours. And all of a sudden I went, maybe I'm not as good as what I think I am. That's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I still remember it was a good lesson. It was yeah, a really yeah, yeah. good lesson. Um, in all seriousness, it was a really good lesson because all oh, I thought, oh, maybe I'm not as good as what I think I am. And uh, yeah, my first pro-am was St. Michael's. So I just played pro-ams um, through New South Wales. I didn't venture into Queensland until about 2005. Um, because I was obviously uh, from down there. Um, yep. Didn't know much about the Tropo Tour. Didn't really look into it because back then New South Wales had quite a solid pro-am um, structure and circuit. So uh, that's, where I, that's where I started. Yeah, right. And, you know, you weren't as good as you thought you were. That, that comment you just said then, what did that then take you to go on and do? What, what, taking that comment, you're like, boy, that must have been a shock to the system, I imagine. To a degree, it, it would probably, you know, might, might have hit you fairly hard to begin with. Would that be the right case? And how you reacted to that? Yeah, well, well, I thought to myself, there's no way in the world I could have shot seven that day. I couldn't have, I couldn't have shot seven. I played pretty solid. Did I play my best golf? No, of course not. But, um, and it was a shock to the system. And I thought, well, obviously, these guys are good. They're, they're really good. And as you know, Donk, most of the, even those pro-ams, there's a, there's a number of guys back, even back then and even now, that used to go out and you get to mention, yeah, your Hallers and your Crawfords and um, your McKechnies and all those guys, but you go and play course, different courses, and mate, they shoot some numbers. Oh, yeah. They shoot some numbers that, that would, if you got the US Tour field out playing a one-day event where they didn't have um, practice rounds and everything like that, you know, that, I don't know if many, you know, these guys have win a lot of the time. Um, I honestly, mm. I honestly believe that. So it kicked me into gear to get out and have a, you know, I just, I just worked hard. I worked really hard. I worked hard when I was younger, but then I worked even harder 
after that. So, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. And so working harder, how long, where, where did you go over the next probably couple of years then? And how long, actually, even better question, how long did it take you to before you started to feel like you belong? Maybe. Uh, from when I finished my traineeship, about eight to ten years. Yeah. Um, I did have some good results, like I think about 2000, mm. 2005 in the two nationwide events we had out here. I, finished, I think I finished uh, 12th and 5th in two of those, so I got some money up on nationwide there. And, um, so nationwide was the, is now the Corn Ferry, isn't it? Corn Ferry, yes. So I, I, had, um, I had some good finishes along the way, but um, I remember Laurie Monahue said to me when I finished my time, Laurie's, um, I think, one of the best medal coaches um, going around, uh, he's especially in golf, but in just about anything. And he said, "Right, you've got an eight to ten year traineeship now." That's what he said to me when I finished my traineeship playing. And um, he generally works a lot on eight years, but he and he's he's not far off. If you think of the the main guys, so you think of your Tigers, think of your Jason Days. Um, mm -hmm. Like Tiger was winning when he was young, but. You, you think how many years he took to get to that. Now, he might be a little ahead of the curve there, but, um, but yeah, it was basically another traineeship. And it was about eight to 10 years, about 2007, I think it was, when I, I had uh, my first best event, the Masters, where I think I finished eighth or sixth at the Masters. Um, and then, you know, finished fourth at the New Zealand Open the week after. And then that kind of, from there, I just kind of kicked on. Yeah. Speaking of that, now you're talking... Um... Australasian Tour. What, what was your first Australasian Tour win? The 2006 Victorian P PGA. When was at that? Century Lakes. What's that? Ah, Century Lakes. I actually yeah. played there in that one, I think, myself. Yeah, okay. I reckon okay, I was yeah. there on that one. I, yep. I didn't win that. No, no, <laughs> no. I'd I don't remember you seeing you. I don't remember seeing no, you there on that I don't even Sunday. remember being at presentations um, <laughs> <laughs> too much. I, I, I actually beat Leash that, that Yes, week. that's right. Um, he, <clears throat> him and I, I finished, I was a group maybe two ahead of him. Him and I were tied and I made a par in 18. Cent, the last hole at Century Lakes is a real tough mm. hole, if you remember. Yeah, it is, yeah. Dog yeah, legs yeah, right to left. Um, we got a hit a good drive, but then uh, wind was in two out of the left, which made it even tougher. <laughs> Over water, second shot. And um, I, made a, I made a great par and I was, I was, I was pretty nervous. And I remember going up in the locker room after I put my card in, taking some breaths, and um, and I'm sitting in the locker room, and I'm going, I hope there's not a playoff because I am shaking like a dog pooing razor blades. I was <laughs> I was so nervous. I I couldn't see myself in other swing. A hundred percent. I'm going if I go out there and yeah. have a playoff with leashes, I, I'm not no. going to be able to. I'm not going to be able to play. And I remember watching it from the balcony, and he, luckily for me, he hit it right, and well, which wasn't hard to do, by the way, and just into the rough, into the hay, and hacked it out. Um, couldn't get out of the water, hit it on, and two putter made five, and I won. So um, I do actually uh, my, remember watching that playoff. Yeah. I'll yeah. So my yeah. Um, my sponsor Robbie Bennett's quite often asked me. He goes, "You beat Leash in 2006 in the big PGA." And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "How's he doing now?" <laughs> He's good. This, you know, they, I've got this saying that um, you know your your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Yeah. That's that's why a guy like Robbie's attracted to you and comments yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to make sure he, you're nice and grounded. <laughs> he he often he often says that. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not bad, not bad. Um, yeah. That I, I believe that's also just to put that in perspective. I think least one the. Uh, Southern, Toyota Southern Classic might have been down at Woolaware. At Wollongong, yeah, yeah. Woolaware. Wollongong, yeah, yeah. Wollongong, sorry. Yep. And, and he also been, won one in Cairns. Yeah, it might have been the week before that or the week after or very close to that. And yep. he lapped the field that week. Oh, like mate. It was, it was only three rounds. It got reduced to three rounds because of weather, but it was, it was like 22 under in three rounds. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, That's Lisa's, the kind of form he was in. He's... Yeah, he's an amazing player. He, he's a great bloke. You know, when I played the Open 2013, I uh, practiced rounds with him and, you know, had dinner with him and that sort of thing. And he, he's just, he's a great, he hasn't changed one bit, but he, he's just, he, he's a natural. He's something that um, 
I mean, he people might look at me and think the same thing, that he's a natural. Where he swings a golf club, I mean, it's technically pretty good, but he just looks like... He's almost one of these guys that looks like he's born with a club in his hand. He just does what he does, and it comes off really well. It comes off great. Yeah, he's quite amazing. Uh, I, I remember yeah. doing a uh, clinic at Wynnum one time uh, after the Australian PGA, and they yep. asked me to come down and just do some some um, wedge play stuff on their short little range there. And so I've got, you know, there's about 10, 20 people there and I'm, I'm going through a bit of a systemized way that average Joe can kind of hit a pitch shot to a 50 metre mark, you know, that, that tricky in between yep. shot. And I'm kind of, yep. you know, you just take half a backswing. You do, so, you know, yeah, it's all good. So you just kind of take half a backswing, measure it out, where you go. And they're going okay. And then Matty King, the head pro comes out and says, mate, just keep it going because Leash is going to come down. He's going to join in this clinic for a bit. He said, it's okay. Mark Leishman, he said, there you go. Great, cool, this will be good. So I've just spent half an hour talking to these people about how they can improve their pitching by taking a half back swing and then going through to there. And then if you want to go a bit bigger, you go a bit longer than that and a bit shorter than that. So Leish comes over and I said, mate, how would you go about hitting a few of these targets at 50 and 70? And they said, oh, just look and hit it. Yeah, yeah. it just undid all your work, didn't it? Thanks, Leish, appreciate that, mate. And then I'm sitting there going, how can I recover this? And I kind of said... Hey, Leash, how many of these shots would you hit when you're training? You know, in a normal week of training, you know, under 100 metres? Oh, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? It's too many to count. Yeah. <laughs> I can look at the rest of them again. How much time you got to do that? Yeah. He had a system, but it was an in, 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 integrated yeah. system into his brain, yeah. So he had a system, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. worked on it hard a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. instinctual, it gets to that point. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, yeah, I don't know where to go now. I was either going to go British Open or what you think about that. Um, I, I'm going to jump into that a bit. This might be for some more of the amateurs that might join later on. Instinctual, uh, but had a system. What, what do you find with that? So if you're talking, um, you know, in terms of your practice or learning a new skill, yep. how have you found in your time works well? Or, and, and you've played a lot of pro-am golf, a lot of amateurs and stuff like that. What's the biggest difference you're seeing between yourself and, and other pros out there and how they become instinctual, becomes, you know, second nature or they just talent, what it looks yeah, like, I, compared to when you started? Yeah, I think, I think you've, got to have, you've got to have systems. You've got to have ways. You've got, to, you've got to know what you need to do to be able to hit a shot. That's what you need to do. So you talk about your 50-metre shot and, and Matty knows how um, anal I am with my wedges. Um, and getting weight, he's probably, I can't see him, but I bet he's laughing. <laughs> he's laughing. Um, yeah, funny, that. <laughs> he's, he's, Pretty much all I, of them I can see are laughing. <laughs> I, I, am, I am like the Gestapo with my wedges. So I get them and I pull them all apart. And I, I you know, the, the, the Benny and, and Matty and Mitch and um, Phil and all that shop think I'm crazy. But you've got to have a, yeah, you've got to have a system to know um, Things are much easier when you know what you need to do. If you don't know what you need to do, it's like this, what's going on at the moment with all this virus stuff. We don't know when we're back. Mm, so mm -hmm. for me, it's hard knowing how much practice I do. How, you know, when are we back? Are we back in a month? Are we back in two months? Are we back in four months? Where, you know, when I have a break at the end of the year, um, you know, you finish on the 19th of December, whatever it is, and you know the 6th of February is the Vic Open. So you know you go through your processes. So what I say that for is, it's the same thing with, say, your wedge game. If you mm -hmm. don't know how far you have to swing it to hit a shot, it makes it very difficult. It sounds mm -hmm. pretty, it's pretty basic. So um, I think the biggest thing is, is working on that in processes. And I remember with my wedges, and this is for your students, I remember watching a thing with BJ Singh, and he never practiced. It was it's a bit of a thing that was out about, okay, you've got to get a layup distance. So get a distance and practice it so you're good at it. I never worked under that because it's very hard to hit it the same distance all the time. So I used to put nets out at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Every morning, oh, five, five days a week, six days a week, I'd put these mm -hmm. nets out. I'd be out there at 5.30 in the morning. And I used to hit into the nets, but then I'd, almost, I'd also try and hit a metre short of the net, hit the top of, back of the net, hit just over it, that sort of thing. And each distance I hit is a slightly... I work on percentages with my wedges. So from 50 mm -hmm. metres, I try and swing at 65 to 70% with a, with a 60 degree wedge. That goes 50 yeah. metres for me. Yeah. Um, now, if I want to hit 53, I don't hit at 65 or 70. I hit at 70%. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to hit at 70, uh, if I want to hit at 55, 
I now hit at 75%. Now, you might say two metres, you're going 5%, you're not that good to swing that. But when you train it, um, it's just a feel, but it's also, you, you know what you've got to do. You get there and go, righto, I've got 55 or so, I've got 56. Right, 56 is, you know, 75% is probably going to be a little short. Am I happy with a metre putt? Yes, I am. So I'll hit a 55 metre shot. Um, so, but you kind of then you get there and you go, right, I'm there to there. Boom, I'm through. You, so you're taking that, you're not questioning what you're doing. You, you know exactly what you're doing. And, that, and that's pretty much what I'm saying. Anytime you question, and a lot of amateurs and a lot of pros, pros question. And I, as I said, I see Matty out there a bit and he's probably, he's probably one and he'd probably say, you know, he's not 100%. He kind of questions what he does a little bit. He doesn't, you know, he's probably, as I can't see his face, but uh, um, if he he's through his whole game, he's yeah. smirking. <laughs> he, you know, because once again, he's got as much talent or more talent I've got, but it's it's just those little things that make the difference between um, being where I am and being able to play, you know, and being able to play for 20 years, which is, um, mm, you know, said huge, some people yeah. may say a miracle, um, or um, or someone that or someone that works in a shop that can't quite to get to where they want it. Yeah, and that's what you just said there, the little things, just that little one percenters. One percent is hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Any top Hundred percent is a one percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just those. It's those. Yeah, it is those little things. And the way you think, the way you react, the way you—they're all the the little things. All the little things. Yeah. All right. Just in between here, I've actually put this live on Facebook as well. So you got to behave yourself. All right. It's out there to the world right now. Yeah, but what I want to say to anyone looking on there, which is quite a few people on there, well, this this is quite good. It's quite good. You know, first time. Pretty happy. Anyone on there, you want to punch a question in the comments, I'll, uh, I'll hit Jeffro up at the end. So we'll see how we go. And Peter Weldon reckons you'd probably make a pretty good caddy by the looks of that. And Brendan oh, well on there. I was, listen, Brendan it's, Chant's it's asking well, if we can just have this uh, as an audio session. And, you know, while that may be very watching. accurate there, Brendan, I, but, you know, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, have to just check it out. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's obviously around the mate. I'm He'll get it later, you. I'm sure. Quickly, at the Korean Open, um, I saw an article. I was cleaning out some stuff in my room the other day in 2015, I think it was, Korean Open, which is a really tough track. I oh, yeah, 65. with the big slips on the greens and the kind of, yeah, yeah I've seen that. One. I shot 65 the first day. I was leading by three. And oh. um, and we were we were pretty happy. We went to the locker room and we go into the onsen, the hot bars, and we come out and we have a shower. And if he's listening, he, he's smiling right now. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, they've got deodorant and they've got combs and all that sort of thing. And next thing he sprays some deodorant on, and he goes, Oh, shit, that's stinging a bit. That's, um, that's stinging. He put hairspray <laughs> instead of deodorant under his arm. So uh, I actually wrote that in one of my columns, in one of my articles. You got and, uh, oh, there you go. It just, oh, so it for, um, actually, yeah, but he is watching, by the way, as you said. Um, <laughs> on that point there, for those of you who don't know, Jeffro writes some articles for Inside Golf. Uh, what is it kind of tips from the not tips from the tour? In, inside behind the ropes or something? Yeah, it's just it's just it, it, you know inside the ropes. It's just uh, it's an article that or I just tell the truth. I don't try and butter it up. I say when I've had yeah. bad times, I say I've had bad times, and when I've had good times, I've had good times. So I don't try and butter it up. I try and t- speak from the heart, and that's what sort yeah. of bloke I am. So. Uh, and mate, the mate, one I thing I know like, about um, journalism is they don't like what you do and it's not responding well, they, you won't be there very yeah. long. But how, how long have you been writing that for now? Yeah, it's about eight years now. Yeah, about so it's obviously years. pretty relatable to a lot of people. I, I reckon when I go to a pro-am, I reckon I get five to ten people minimum every pro-am come up to me and go, your article is the first thing I turn to. So, Which is <laughs> nice because, because I'm not a writer. I'm not a professional. Yeah. I, I've been, you know, I'm not... I'm, I'm not a dumb. I'm reasonably intelligent, so I can I can write. But I'd yeah. never written articles for magazines, so it, it's good to get that feedback. No, I, I've read them, and they're great. They're good. Uh, the reason I got you on here too, mate. Good storytelling. It's great. It's very good. Yeah. Um, all right. There's you've given me a ton of stuff extra. British Open, yeah. two thousand. Yep. I noticed by accident, I'm sure that you happen to have a British Open shirt on right now. <laughs> it is actually. Uh, yeah. I pulled it out the other day. There it is. But yeah. Muirfield, 2013. 13. So, Jeff, right, did you play in the Muirfield Open of 2013? I did play, And did, yes, and yes. did you did, happen to play a practice round with Mark Leishman by any chance? 
I played Plaxus round with, uh, well, I played with a few, uh, some, a few good players, but the yes, yeah. Tuesday yeah. I played with Leash, yeah. Marcus Fraser, Fraser and Brendan Jones. Ah, there you go. Some two winners um, of Europe and, and Japan. We, yeah, we had a bit of a money match. And my claim to fame, or my, my the greatest part of the practice rounds was uh, they're all good guys, but on 18, they're all hitting irons and I'm hitting drivers. All right? And it was about 240 metres to the fairway. And mm-hmm. the rough is maybe 70 centimetres high. So... <laughs> Um, we get up there. I, I hit a good one. Leash hits it left. Uh, Fraze hits a good one just down the left. Um, Fraze hit three, what I think. And Jones, he hit two on and he hit a good one. Mm. We get down there. Well, anyway, Jones, he hasn't reached a fairway. He's in a rough <laughs> short of the fairway. So they're all giving me crap. So just as he was down having a look, I got my phone out. I went, Jonesy. And he looked like this. I went, <laughs> and I said, I've got it. I've got the... I've got the evidence that you didn't reach the fairway. It's very good. He goes, what are you doing? He was actually a little bit, uh, yeah. So I don't know if he remembers that, but. Uh, and, uh, I don't think he's on this call yet, but I'm sure we can afford it to him. Yeah. But uh, no, no, I played the open, which was awesome. I, I absolutely crapped myself all week. You know, practice rounds. I got there Sunday, the Sunday before the event, and there was probably 10,000 people out there. Wow. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, and then practice rounds, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I was, nervous all week like you stand up in a practice round on the 13th of par three and you know that it's a, it's a stand that's like our last stands at the at, at the australian open around tea and they're full on a wednesday and <laughs> um and i was really nervous until i got to the first tee thursday and i made peace with everything almost it was kind of it was funny i spoke to laurie a few times and he goes don't hide away from them. And this is just probably a good tip for amateurs when they get nervous or they've got made trans. Don't mm. hide away and try and... Because you can't hide in this game. Take it in and go... And you be honest with yourself and go, you know what? I'm nervous, but I'm here. I'm enjoying my golf. I'm loving it. Might be the last hole of the club championships. You're leading, come down. Go, you know what? I'm here. This is me. I'm right here. I'm here. Let's, let's do my best. And I um, hit one of the best drives I've ever hit off the first tee in front of, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people that were line the fairway because I was off at 11.10 that day. And I think Tiger was about 20 minutes after me. So, oh. um, yeah. So on the people, same, people. same nine, different nine? or had No, no, he's on the same open. nine. Yeah, yeah. There was people, people everywhere. So I oh, see. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, not that I've been there, but I've definitely been in the crowds following Tiger, following Norman back in the day. So you'd sit there and you had to go two to three holes in front to just even get a view of them, you know? Otherwise, you're five yeah. or six people back. So I'm yeah. imagining you're copping a ton of people running up the ropes and running everywhere. And... Oh, there's, pe- there's people walking everywhere. I mean, what kind I, of distraction I, was that like? I take my hat off to those guys. Then uh, we'll, we'll use Tiger as an example because the distractions out there are ridiculous. You know, mm. um, around the stands, around the back of the tee, there, everyone was sitting down, but walking up and down, people walking up and down the sides, people around the back of the stands having conversations. It's, it's not dead silent. And I take my hat off to those guys, um, how good their focus is. Um, that's one thing that I got, how good their focus is. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, just to fo- focus in. And for Tiger to do what he's done and to get what he's, you know, I mean, the amount of people that follow him and, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And... So, tell me a little bit about your your actual tournament and how how you finished up and what, what went on. Yeah, I missed a cut by three in the end. Uh, did you um, did I you finished. know that you were close? Um, um, down yeah, Friday, I, I did. I I the first day I had seventy five, which was four over, I think. Um, and I was about 70th position. And by, I wasn't off until um, 4.40 the next day. So all day. And the course was, that was the year the course was really dry. So the only player to finish under par was Phil Mickelson. Um, mm. um, and it was, we were allowing about 100 metres of run. So if you had a bunker that was 280 100 metres of run? Yes. Yeah. So if you had a bunker that was 280 off the tee, you wanted to fly at 180 to keep short of the bunker. Um, right. Did you, so, so what how, was what was one of the shortest irons you've hit off a of par fourteen? Then, uh, imagine you've hit some irons off of it. 
yeah, yeah. I think it was the third hole. I think I might have hit seven iron. It's only a short hole, a short dog leg right. I, I can't remember seven how long it was. Oh, mate, by memory, I've got to remember. I think I think it went about 230, 240. Um, <laughs> and I only hit my seven iron about 150, 155. Um, I can't That's lie a... about that because if Weldo's on Facebook, he'll, he'll... Oh, yeah, no, he's still there. And there's other girls here and know about you as well, but it looks like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but no, yeah. no, I made three double bogeys the second day from one and a half bad shots. And <laughs> I, my three double bogeys, a fifth hole, a par five, I took driver off the deck going at the green. At this stage, I was running about 50th. I was going, going all right. I took driver off the deck and pulled it probably 10 metres. And because it was so dry, you're watching it, it's just bouncing and running and you can't sit. Then it went about a foot into the rough and I made, I'd say I was only 30 metres from the flag, but made seven. Oh. Um, on the eighth hole, I pushed my second shot. I hit four on in <coughs> and pushed it maybe 25 foot, just missed the green to the right. There was about 25 people there. Couldn't find my ball. <laughs> so I'm assuming someone yeah. used, used that on the weekend. Um, yeah. You know who that was? That was a mate of Brendan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Um, on, <laughs> Said, I want you on this Jeff Rowe play. <laughs> I think on 13, I, I just hit a bad shot on 13. So, yeah. um, and made it into the pot bunker at the front. So I made three doubles, but I was ranked... Um, I was told I was ranked fourth after the first two days in ball striking. That's T to green and, yeah, to basically off the tee and to the green. So, I was ranked right. fourth in the field. So, I was, I was pretty proud of myself on a yeah. big stage to do that. Even though I missed a cut, it was disappointing. I was also part of me, I was pretty proud. What's the um, the biggest memory you take away from your week? Um, biggest memory? Well, there's a few. Um, probably speaking to Scotty in the locker room. Adam Scott. Adam Scott. So he won the Masters, what was it, three months before. Mm. And um, I was in the locker room um, and, uh, I, yeah, I saw him and says, you know, Scotty and he come up, he actually come up and said, you know, congratulations on making your first major. I said, yeah, thanks mate. And I said, mate, I've got to tell you the day that, uh, you won the masters. I, I was about eight thirty nine o'clock. I went straight to the fridge. I got a UDL can out, a lemon lime soda UDL can. I had that. And then I was on the piss all day. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, I said, I said, mate, it would, should have been a national holiday. I said, I was on a piss all day. He said, mate, I had two beers. He said, I got home about one o'clock after all my, I had two beers and I was stuffed. And I said, well, I made it up for you. Don't worry, mate. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was so happy. But that, not only that, probably the other, one other little highlight. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot on the golf course, but this sounds funny. It's not on the golf course. We, we come in the locker room and they have, they, you know, tees and on the range, you can pick whether, what type of ball you want. You want Shrixen or you want Titleist or you want Bridgestone or whatever. And they had a box full of um, British Open tees. That was the box was a foot wide, foot by foot by about a foot. You can say foot high, and it was nearly full. So I went up, and I love tees. And Wilde is probably smiling. All right, <laughs> and I I just I just grabbed a handful, and I had Jeff Lloyd, a mate of mine who used to play for Manly, big front rower. He loves free stuff more than me. He goes, "That's not how you do it." So he went and got the plastic bag, put it over the tee <laughs> thing tipped it in and tipped it back. So he bought this whole bag over. I'm thinking, I'm going to get in trouble. So I said, put it in the locker. There was only about 50 tees left in the box. Next thing, Zach Johnson comes in. And he looks in and goes, geez, they've cleaned these, cleaned these tees out. And I thought, Zach, if only you knew how many tees were in my locker. I was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. I think I brought home about three kilos of tees. you still got them, haven't you? Still using them? i still them? got some. Yeah, yeah. I'll br- actually, I'll bring one out for Maddie. Um, next few days. Yeah, right. There you go. <coughs> oh, sorry. Pardon me. I like that. Speaking of Adam Scott, speaking of Adam Scott, I think you've alluded to this, and I know what the answer to this probably is, but we'll go through this for a few of the uh, the fans here watching. You're, uh, you're the best course you've ever played. Augusta. There you go. That's the Adam Scott reference. Right there. See that? Yeah. That's pretty- yeah. It was yeah. very seamless, that one. I, like that. I, was, I was lucky Tell me enough about it. to you get um, meet a member in the New, the New Zealand Open. I played with him. Um, he said, uh, who's that? Go to bed. Sorry. Yeah. Rudely interrupting <laughs> the interview. My daughter coming to kiss me goodnight. Sorry about that. Oh, that, oh that's, that's nice. 
<laughs> That's nice. no, no, I'll kiss a vodka bottle later. Um, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to play with a um, a member. Um, I played about two holes with him. His name was Pat Battle. And I said, Pat, so where are you from? And he was from America. He said, yeah, I live in Atlanta. And I said, okay, where are you a member? He said, oh, a little club down in Augusta. And I said, oh, okay, so what's that called? He said, Augusta National. And I went, I won't say what I said, but... Um, <laughs> Um, if Ryan's a truck, I said, come on, <laughs> where, where are you really member? And he said, no, Augusta. So I just fired a heap of questions at him. We had a good time. And he said, if you ever come over, I'd love to host you. So when I was going over to play the WGC at Doral, I just went earlier and um, went there, played two rounds, stayed in the cabins near the 10th tee overnight, had breakfast, lunch, dinner in, in the clubhouse. It was amazing. Oh, wow. Absolutely amazing. And... You butler cabins and all that lot. Is, is that what you yeah, just said? Yeah, I went man. through everything. Went through every every possible room. Yeah, we stayed in the cabins. If you remember where Rory was leading and he hooked it up near the, the cabins on 10? Yeah, that's, that's the only time any of us have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's the cabins I stayed in. So Rory, where Rory hit the tree, we were right there. The only thing I regret, I actually wanted to, and I, I didn't have I didn't have the... Um, I didn't have the nuts to do it. I was I wanted to go out on the tenth fairway about midnight and roll around naked. Because Augusta <laughs> is my holy grail. And I, I honest to God, I go, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna roll around on the fairway and I can always say I rolled around the tenth fairway naked to Augusta. But I then thought, hang on a minute, there could be security guards, it's dark, you can't <laughs> see them in the trees. Yeah. Imagine getting kicked out of here. So I, I didn't go through with it. Um, but, there obviously but I did wasn't enough beer. UDLs in the butler's cabin for you. No, don't worry. There was plenty. Um, <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> with, with dinner, we were having dinner and there's, each of us have got a, um, a guy in, a, in, in white, a white tux behind us standing there just waiting, serving you every need. Uh, every time you finished a drink, one was back there. But I just, I thought, we're playing the next day. I thought, imagine getting kicked out of Augusta. Before because, you had a chance to have a game. Well, I already had one game, but I wanted to have two. But the beauty is, um, I've also, I, I know Pat, and Pat said, come back any time you want. So I've just got to organise the time to, to go back there. Unfortunately, the best time yeah. to play, it's kind of February, February, March, yeah. just before. And we have a lot of, um, lot of events on in Australia. So it's kind of hard. It wouldn't be that hard for me to choose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough life you've got making decisions like that up the top there, mate. I like yeah. to... <laughs> I think most on the call are probably in the same boat. <laughs> That's a pretty yeah. good story. I like that. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on it moving to November? What will it be like, do you reckon, in November time? Oh, no, I think it'll be... I think the course will be in unbelievable condition. You're coming, mm. out of, uh, coming out of summer... Yeah, right. Um, um, where it normally comes out of winter, uh, they're going to obviously have to pump a bit of water in. But I, I think the course will be um, like it is every year. It, it'll be amazing. They don't it'll leave any stone unturned, do they? They, they do no, it. No, they no, no, no. They've, they've got, mate. It's it's when you see behind behind the scenes. We went past media centres, ranges, corporate hospitality. They've only got three cor corporate sponsors. Augusta. They've got. Um, Rolex, IBM and uh, Mercedes um, and I'll give you an example They're, they've got three villas left of the 10th fairway which are when you say villas it's like a Queenslander house with a veranda right. all the way around it and what they do is they've got three of them one for as I said one for IBM one for Rolex one for Mercedes and what they do is say grill they say grill we say barbecue so all the sponsors get out there now at the front of those three villas is a replica of the 18th green and what I mean by replica, um, Pat, Pat, the member, said it took them, I think it took them seven months to build this one groin, and it's to the millimetre. It, it's been, it's all, yeah. he said, it's laser, it's, it's all. So what they do is they cut the hole in that groin where the hole is on the 18th. So we watch Adam Scott miss a 12-footer when the pin's back right. You go yeah. out with your putter and, yeah. um, and have a putt. Have a putt round. You can have the same putt that that Adam Scott, uh, Adam Scott had. So uh, I see Matty Guy just joined. How are you, MG? He's probably not on. Yeah, there's so. there's a few of the uh, PJ guys on here. Actually, there's quite a lot. Hey, buddy. It's really good. <laughs> oh, there hey, we go, Matty. Oh, the Silver Fox. Hello, mate. Good stuff. Hey, uh, 
Oh, we've got another tour pro here as well. Matty Guy, welcome to the conversation. Hey, what I might do, Matty, I'll just mute you for a bit, right? Yep. So I've just got a couple more things I'm going to ask Jeffrey, and then I'm going to just put it out there. So anyone on Facebook who's watching, um, just uh, just let us know any questions you've got for him. Yeah, I know there's a few of my clients on there as well, you know, but um, yeah. I know a lot of your pros are, are going to <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's what these are all about, making sure you have a nice drink while we're going. So, Jeffrey, I've got another one for you. Yeah. Um, Hole-in-ones. How many have you had? Four. Four hole-in-ones. Four hole-in-ones. I think... I think I've had five albatrosses. What? Um, five, yeah, sorry, one of the, one five of the albatrosses. Holen, yeah. Yeah, one of the, one of the hole in ones was on a par four. Right. In the New Zealand Open. I think I remember watching this on television. Two thousand and seven, it was. So actually, yeah. I might have even had the trophy here. Oh, yeah, there it is. I see it up there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Has he still got the golf ball in it? Is it like one of those ones you get? No, no, no. I gave Michael Hill the golf ball, which in the end was... um, Oh, the guy who runs the course. Yeah, who Michael Hill, the jeweller. The jeweller guy, yeah. It was was at his golf course, the hill. So I'll I'll run you through it quickly. Second day, Friday, um, I started on the back nine. I made a one. Apparently, it was, if you look at Google records, the first hole in one, the par four in European tour history. There were some ones after that, but maybe because it was a co-sanctioned event, um, they don't count that as, you know, as technically the first one. Uh-huh. Um, and when I finished, I went to the media centre and they've gone, yeah, you know, and they asked me questions. They said, Michael Hill wants to meet you. So I go over and Michael and he's going, yeah, we're going to put a plaque on the ground. It's the first hole in one on the golf course because it was only new back then, if you remember. The golf course was only brand new. Yeah. And... Um, he said, oh, yeah, and we had a prize on that hole, but we had to take it off on the Wednesday because it went against government regulations. And I went, right. government regulations? And he said, yeah, because there's people from Europe, because of a joint European tour event, we have people from England and France and all that. And I said, oh, what was the prize? He said, a $1.5 million house in Queenstown. <laughs> no. I'm not making really? this. I don't, think, no. I don't sit here at night trying to set this um... up, you know. This is... This is... <laughs> So, Michael, why did you bring that up? <laughs> like, so, I didn't, I didn't need to said, know that. Yeah. You've got New wow. Zealand have laws, and I think Australia have laws, where you just can't <clears> give people from, say, the UK land. You can't just give them land. There's, there's land? protocols. Oh. You, well, it was a landed house, so you, can't just, you can't just give them land. So it was a $1.5 million house. So about three months later, I get a call from Simon Budley and said, Michael Hill wants your address. Can we give it to him? And I said, yeah, no problem. So a package turns up. And, uh, you know, I pulled the package out and I shook the box. No check fell out. So I thought there's no cash there. Was that keys to a house? I opened <laughs> no. a box and it's a trophy. Hey. Um, that one up there. I, I, I could probably, <laughs> probably. Is this a one and a half here. million dollar trophy? Here we go. We've got the trophies here. We've got. Oi, hello. And, we've got, and this is the hole in one trophy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah. This is what I got. That's what you now, got. Now, Stephen spelt with a V. He spelled it P-H. <laughs> and yeah. then he spelt Jeffress. I spelled Jeffress, J-E-F-F-R-E-S-S. It's spelled J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S. Jeffries. So I've gone. I've quite often said, and Donk, you can help me out too. If anyone runs in this step hand Jeffers, um, let him know <laughs> I've got his hole-in-one trophy. Right. But I've pretty much gone from the, I'd, I'd say you've gone from the penthouse to the shit house. I've gone from a one and a half million dollar house to, to that. <laughs> Which has uh, got a chip. I, it's got a chip. You probably can't see yeah. it, but I dropped it. Dropped it when I was pissed one night on the top. So, how uh, many times you told this story? Oh, a few, uh, I imagine. Yeah, I've done, done a few. A few. All I would have right. rather the house. Yeah. Now, now I, I hate to get you off the I'm chair a, again. But can you go back up to the trophy shelf there for a sec? I just spotted it's something. Not, it's not very big. What? <laughs> what, what, what did you spot? That left, left. That there. What's that? that? Yeah, well, I haven't touched this in a while. Big trophy. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's a nice trophy. Is that MG that's, was, that, MG that was is, there when I won. He was there. That Matty guy. Yeah. That he would, was, would, he was there, there in my corner. Would I be right in um, saying that was the biggest victory you had? The Fiji oh, International? Have, uh, Absolutely, yeah. 2014? Yeah. 2014. Um, it's got a little carver 
Cup. I'll also tell you about it oh, maybe nine months, eight months after I won this. So I took this down to Port Macquarie and I played. We have a juniors reunion. And I took it down and we were drinking out of it. Okay. Um, yeah. That's not a good idea <laughs> because yeah. I was crook as a dog for about two weeks. So I don't know whose cold I picked up. Um, yeah. Um, oh, the, the left-handed green jacket. Yeah, the the jacket. left-handed green jacket. Oh, yes, the uh, the infamous left-handed jacket. The Left East yeah. Challenge. Yeah, green the jacket. jackets. It's, it's in the cupboard, Matty, somewhere. It's in the cupboard. Oh, I should have worn it tonight. That would have been good. <laughs> it is a good one. Hey, Paul. Hey, hey Paul. I, yes. um, I have a Matty got in with a question. Sorry. Yep, yep. Go on, mate. I have a small story to tell about Jeffro when he won that in Fiji. Oh, yes, so you were an eyewitness. Yes, go on. Yeah, but it was actually probably a week or two weeks earlier in Japan. And, uh, and Jeff Rowe, um was a very good man. I was a very unwell boy up there in Japan. I had a kidney stone and he helped me get to hospital and all sorts of things. And I had to withdraw from the tournament, but I hung around for the weekend. And then we were driving back to the airport after the tournament. Um, and Jeff Rowe sort of just petered out on the weekend, I think. And... You know, low, I made the cut, but, you know, a low finish. And I remember him telling me that he didn't know how much longer he could keep going and doing this for. And we had this discussion in the car driving back. And it's tough. You know, tour life is tough. It's, it's hard. It's hard to win. It's hard to make ground on tours, on the big tours. And, you know, it's not easy. And, and I remember saying to Jeff I said, mate, you know what? The next event we're going to play is the Fiji International. And if there's one guy in the field that knows the course better than anyone else, it's you. And I said, that could be your week, mate. And then he went on to win. And <laughs> I we had a great week that week. Like, I, I didn't, I, he obviously won, I didn't. But, you know, it was just awesome to support a mate and know where we'd been a few weeks earlier and the discussion we'd had in the car and then for him to go on and win, it was just awesome. How good is that? That's a great yeah, story. I thought, I thought you were going to tell that story about the petrol station the second <laughs> after day after. Do you remember that, MG? Is he, is he there? there? He, he yeah, I, re I remember it. I remember it, but you tell the story. You tell the story. It's the <laughs> story. Uh, I've told the story. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah, I'll do the short version. We we were uh, MG gave me a lift back to the airport. We pull in a petrol station. Car doesn't start. So um, we're oh, I don't know, probably six k's from the airport. I'm going to say eight k's from the airport. Car wouldn't start. Um, we've got a flight to catch. Nothing. Um, the guy in the petrol station comes out to have a look at it. He gets a hammer and he hits the top of the battery. That's, you remember that? That's all he was doing. So we're, 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 we're in trouble now. So all of a sudden the car pulls in uh, to fill up petrol. And the guy looks at me and goes, Stephen Jeffress. And I go, yeah. He goes, Fiji International. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, oh, he comes over and shakes my hand. And then I said, oh, mate, a car won't start. And he goes, wait, don't move, don't move jumps in the car, off he goes. And I thought, I don't know what's going on here. Next thing he comes back, he'd driven down the road to get a mechanic from a mechanic <laughs> store and bought back. And they're all shaking my hand. I said, listen, we're running late for a flight. You know, can we, you know, MG and I, they're going. So remember they got the car started. And when they got the car started, they went, well done. They jumped in the car, off they went. Never saw them again. Don't know who they were. <laughs> don't know. They were, they were <laughs> guard. They were our guardian angels, no doubt about it. it was and, so and funny. We got we got to the airport and we made it. So yeah, I love it. Hey, speaking of that, I, I want to um, ask you a question on that. All right, you you guys have been on tour for I've met you as well, but mate, I'll put it to you there, Jeffrey. I know in my time and and being a pro and and plenty of guys on this call as well, but I think for some of uh, some of the um, some of the amateurs on the call here and people listening in. The uh, the wins and win we used to call it. You know what I mean? You'd have that you'd have that guy out there. He's been out there struggling on tour and can't make the cut and can't do this. And he gets to the point, and we've all been there, like you just said. When well, you get to this point, you go, "That's it. I'm done." You know, I've, I've entered this tournament, or I've got another week or two, and and then I'm out. I haven't got any more money or whatever. And what happens? They yeah. win the next event. They win that next yep. day or whatever. How many yep. times do you reckon you've um, you felt like that in your time. And obviously probably about seven. Seven, seven times in 20 years. Pro there you go. Probably seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's probably not any um, exaggeration. Um, plenty of times. Um, 
yeah, it's, uh, I went through a bad time in 2010 and 11, um, where I thought I'd never play the game again. It was pretty bad. It wasn't just bad golf. I had other stuff going on. Um, mm. You know, I had uh, a leg injury in 2016 where I almost lost my leg. Um, so I didn't know if I was going to, that was a bit different. But um, I remember, oh, I was going to say early to, not that far, four or five years into my time where I just started to play horrendous. I remember driving, I'm out near Cowra in New South Wales and I'm driving along and te- I've got tears coming out my eyes. <laughs> I just, I just, and it's, it's, it was fair income because I thought oh, I'm gone. I'm done. I'm gone. Hmm. I can't, I can't keep doing this. And you know, I, I, one thing Laurie Monty has said, um, my mental coach has said to me, um, or said that one of my great values is uh, grit. He always thinks grit is one of the most important factors a golfer's got to have. And grit is just hanging in there, hanging hmm. in there and hanging in there. So, uh, yeah, there's been plenty of times, plenty of times. I'm it. Because that's, I mean, that's something that, you know, you, you know, and I know, and if you've ever hang around anyone amateur wise anyway, they, there's many times you'll have clients come to you as a golf coach and as a golf pro in the shop or anything like that, going, all right, that's it, I'm done. And, and they've been going bad for months. And it might just be one little thing. It, it might be a, a tip from the pro. It might be one of their mates spotted something or whatever, and all of a sudden everything just clicks I mean- and it's... Yeah, I mean, that year, 2014, like MG spoke about, I had a terrible year in Japan, and I was swapping and changing drivers because Taylor May was sponsoring me, so they'd stick a new driver in my hand every week. And yeah. I went from hitting fairways, not being over fairways, couldn't make cuts, made zero money. Um, and, yeah, it was just... It was a shocking year. One of the worst years I've had money-wise up until Fiji. The only thing I did different before Fiji, after Matt, MG and I had that conversation, was two weeks before, I think MG said before Fiji, which is about right, is I put my old driver, when I come back, I went, I don't know if I broke my contract, but I went, you know what, I'm going to put my old driver back in, put my old driver back in, and off I went. Um, <laughs> Away you went. So, yeah, yeah. So nah, it's, um, Funny thing that you're saying there, because a lot of, particularly in those days too as well, there's quite a few guys out on tour now who aren't into these locked-in contracts for equipment anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, I mean, I don't know about you and whether you want to say that, but are you in something like that at the moment or are you no. just use your no. own gear now? And, and was yeah, that your yeah. choice? You've come to a point where you're going, nah, I use whatever I want. Um, no, I think it's the industry. Industry's struggled a little bit over the last, I was with TaylorMade for quite a few years where I was getting, um, getting obviously paid to use their stuff, use their driver. I did, never mm-hmm. used to all their, their any stuff. I've always used Titleist stuff. I think Titleist is the best ball going out there and, um, best wedges and all that sort of thing, but I I haven't found a tightless driver yet that I can that fits to me. But yeah, so that that's not my um, not my decision. Um, yeah, it was just something that uh, something that happened. Just happened out that way. Yeah, right. Huh? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, boy, I mean, have we done some stuff? Here? I, I want to be make sure that I'm not taking up too much because we've nearly been on an hour now. It's been, um, that's flown by. I don't know about the rest of you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a tournament tomorrow morning, so I better get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Mate, you it's just, just you. you want. The only issue is I've only got about three beers in the fridge. So uh, oh, right. if, we go, if, we go, if we get to 10.30, I could be in trouble. Could be in trouble. someone wants to drop some um, beers around, um, that would be much appreciated. Oh, I've still got a few people hanging in here on Facebook and stuff. And there's a call, obviously the guys on the call here. But I, I'll tell you, I'll ask you about that. Um, the, obviously, you're playing a one-man tournament tomorrow, right? Because no one else is allowed to go on it. A... Yeah, no, no, I'm no, not playing. Not quite... I've, uh... Thoughts on that at the moment? Obviously, US Tour cut it all out. It took them a little while to work out what they were going to do. They were humming and ahhing. Uh, they're talking about getting back in June, I think. Um, Aussie Tour, same thing. Like, there hasn't been a Pro-Am. There hasn't been a Holden Scramble. Oh, Holden Scramble, shit, I better get that right. Volkswagen Scramble run for a couple of months now. Um, you know, there's there's obviously all the amateurs around the place who are only allowed to, you know, Victoria, if there's anyone listening there, they can't even play. Northern Territory, they're not allowed to play at all. Uh, yeah. here, on the, here in the Gold Coast, Queensland, we were out there in grips of two, and it's completely different out there. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the current situation on tour and where you see it maybe being in the future and, yeah, um, I- you know, now and how it's all been going? I, I, I think it's going to be... I think golf's going to get back and start hammering again. When, when it happens, golf clubs and um, we'll start hammering. I think it's going to be hard top. I think we're going to have a massive hangover from, from this, as in golf, golf clubs. And I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope, um, I hope 
the government gets behind. I hope businesses get behind and try and get the economy and, and everything back, back to normal. But, uh, I mean, the PJ have set us a date early June, I think 1st of June at this point. Um, I have, um, that's probably going to come out and change that soon, I would think, um, to a bit later, which I will have to. But, I, yeah, the PGA are, are hamstrung with what's happening around the world. Um, yeah. To me, the PGA shouldn't even put a date out. And we spoke about this earlier today. You know, they, they've just got to, PGA have just got to say, listen, members, we're, we're, where we are until government and business get back to normal. So uh, um, when that's going to be, I have no idea. I actually don't watch the news anymore because I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's healthy for you. Um, mm -hmm. All you hear is the same crap all the time and they, they make you hear what, you, what they want you to hear. So uh, um, I'm just going to sit back and just, and just wait for, for people to tell me when it, when it's time. And I think PJ got to do the same. So whenever that is, I think this whole year is going to, rest of the year is going to be a wipe off. I, I reckon we'll have the Aussie Open and PGA. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly think New South Wales Open will struggle because a lot of these Opens are, are based on government funding. And I think the government's just, what have they paid out? Something like uh, $300 billion or something. Yeah, it's, it's you know, mm. the money. Yeah, is, a lot of them are state government and council funding. And yeah. Yeah. All that money's yeah. coming so, elsewhere. Yeah. So it's going to be hard. So I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope uh, businesses get back in and people want to play golf and all that sort of thing. But um, it's going to be tough times, and you know, it's not much we can do about it. I, I'm I'm not too concerned about. It. I've just I've just got to roll with it. That's all I can do. Mm. Yeah. I can do. yeah. Nah, very good. All right. So maybe maybe we'll go one last thing. Um, we we were talking a little bit earlier on here about um, as a as a golf pro, some of your most nervous. You know, most nervous moment. And I think you mentioned the Australian Open and Peter Lonard. Can you tell us that story? Because I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I played with, uh, and once again, I don't know if Weldo's um, still following or not, but he was catting. Uh, yeah. And, uh, For those that don't know, this is Pete, Peter Weld and PJ. Remember working with the PGA, travelled with you on tour for ages. and Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Played, yeah, played the tour. Um, caught in the arrow. Jeez, he hit it straight. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, played with Peter Lonard in the Aussie Open 2005 down at Moona Lynx. Um, and Lonard at that, I think he might have won the Heritage that year. So he was, he was not necessarily in his prime. I think late 90s, he was, but he was still obviously in pretty good form. And he, um, I played with him and I, I, was, I was nervous. I was, yeah, I was really nervous. So we played the full 18 and I, I play all right. Um, and, but I'm just, I'm nervous all day. And I'm, 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 everything's, it's, it's, everything's happening in fast motion. I can't keep up. So we walk off the 18th green and, you know, he, he thanks me. And it's, it's funny now that I, I know Pete and I speak to him. He's just a he's human being. He, he, um, he's got the same amount of holes that I've got. Um, so it's, it's interesting um, <laughs> how it goes in circles. But uh, um, we walk off the 18th and I, go, and I pull it out. And I pull his scorecard out. Have the marked a score. <laughs> forgot about doing the scorecard all day, all day, because I was all just, right. I said, I was just working so hard with my stuff. So straight away, well, they may remember this if he has said, if you're still watching, but he, I kind of went, oh, and because I was more focused on, I was watching him, but I was trying to focus on my stuff. I couldn't remember what he had. I, I'm walking up there and I, I don't know if Pete remembers. So I go, what do you have there? What do you have there? Because I didn't want to walk in the scorer's hut. I didn't want to walk into the scorer's hut with Blank. a scorecard that's empty. <laughs> that's pretty embarrassing for a young fellow. Australian, eh? Hey? You know, playing yeah. with one of the Australia's best ever players and not have a score on the card. And I, I wrote a few down. And um, when he was um, doing my scores, you've got his marker underneath. I kind of gave it the – I cheated at the test. And I go, all right, he had a four there, he had a five there. You know, I was trying to, I was trying to <laughs> cheat. Because I, could, I honestly couldn't remember what he had. So it was uh, – yeah, it was just one of those days that, you know, you're nervous, you're working hard, you're quick, and just, yeah, forgot to put a score down. <laughs> I like it. That's, uh, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, all right, one final parting word of advice for any of my amateur clients out there, anyone who's listening. Best piece of advice for a golf pro of 20-plus years. You've played in probably – I like to say I've played in more pro-ams than any pro in Australia, but I got corrected once and they said, nah, Stephen Jeffress has got you covered. Um, 
And so you've played with so, a lot of amateurs over a lot of years in a lot of pro ams as well. I know you've been around. Yeah. Um, Carl, give us give us your pearls of wisdom. Don't self diagnose. <laughs> don't self diagnose. That, that's, <laughs> that's a big one. You don't walk into the doctor and you go, "What's that lump?" And he goes, "Yeah, that's um." That's a that's a, a rash due to this, and you go no, it's not. It's it's it can't be due to that. You you know, and uh, I'm I'm talking on personal experience here. Um, um, so you don't self-diagnose. That's the biggest thing. Go and get the lesson off either you donk or any of the PGA members or anyone. Um, but don't watch a golf channel and go yeah I do that. Um, it's the worst thing in the world you can do because most people, as you know, work on things that aren't. Uh, don't equate to what they're doing. I was I played at Southport the other day with a uh, a guy that's in the Australian amateur seniors team, and we're talking about his swing after. And there was a member there at Southport, and he was watching, and he goes, "Oh, so do I do that? Do I?" And I went, "No, mate, you do something completely <laughs> different. Don't you go out and try and do this, or it's gonna, yeah. you know." So that's you a big thing. Uh, self... Golf pro faces and guys just nodding their heads, like smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> just because yeah. I play with with. Uh, um, MG and he he hangs back. I don't go. Oh, sh- oh, I've got to stop hanging back because I go the other way too much. So it just don't self-diagnose. That yeah. that's the worst thing. Read read books. Watch your golf shows. Learn. Nothing wrong with that. Learn and and mm. continue to grow your knowledge. But when it comes to your specific issues, go mm. to someone that knows. And and that's what I do. I I, I see Benny Benny Campbell at Southport and um, he. You know, I, I don't self-diagnose. I go there and he tells me something. I go, okay. Mm. I don't argue with him and go, nah, it's a, you know, the classic one from me is Pro-Am where you go, mate, you're pulling inside. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not getting my weight back. And you go, okay, well, all right. Um, you want to take, <laughs> well, you want right. to take this tablet for the rash or do you want to get rid of the rash or what do you want to do? So, yeah. I love it. I like, I like saying to my pupils, I want you to use me as your filter because I'm not going to stop all that information out there. You're playing partners. Golf's, yeah. the, golf's the best place in the world for um, unsolicited advice, uh, bar none. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, people can offer you everything. Like, there's, you'd, you'd have done this. Do you ever get that time where you remember playing a pro am once where, um, you know, I, I, I normally these guys play in a group of four and I join in the group of four and one of the guys is not there. And the other, and they get to go, where's Dave? And I'm going, I don't know where Dave is. I'm, I'm your pro. I'm playing with you today. Oh, we normally play with Dave. I go, okay. <laughs> they didn't get that I was a pro. They, it didn't click. You know, we get about four holes in, and I'm I'm struggling a bit. But now I get a thirty handicapper. I go, mate, I think you're doing this. <laughs> no, that's good. Like he's so far away from the mark, it's not. Fun. If you just slow it all down, if you keep your head down and follow through, you know, like I, yeah, like. Thanks, mate. I had it. This guy, <laughs> I, I played. I played the Queensland PJ when I was playing. I, I no, I won't mention the player and the guy in case it gets back. But it was a caddy, <laughs> and I wasn't driving that well. And he walked up the tenth fairway, and he said to me, "Geez, you're not hitting that driver too well today, are you?" Well, I nearly pulled out my wedge, snapped it in half, and stabbed him through the neck. With it. <laughs> Both sides, boom, boom. <laughs> not uh, the time, not just, the place. Yeah, yeah, on, just, just, yeah. Listen to people. That's what I do. I listen to. Um, I listen to people that I know and I respect and know that they have um, knowledge to make me better. That's, that's, yeah. that's mm-hmm. a big thing. So, um, and have, have a vested interest in making, making me better. So what they say, you know, is not just uh, flapping the wind. What they say is, you know, it has potential to, to improve you. Yeah. Mm. All right. Here we go. I'm just going to open this up. Any of the boys on the Zoom call here, Dave, Matt, um, Matty, the two mats, Matt and Queen. You got any questions there you want to chuck in on Jeffro? Hey, Matty McLean, can I get a job at Southport? <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Jeffro, you say you, you've been working with Benny Campbell. Yeah. So, Just so those I, who don't know, Ben Campbell, head pro at Southport Golf Club. head pro at Southport, yeah. I went to uni with Benny before I did, before we both did our apprenticeship. So yep. he, Benny and I did our time through the same years, and in two thousand we went to uni together. Um, yep. You know, how did you come about working with, with Benny? <laughs> Look at Benny. Um, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, it, it kind of. Um, I used to work with Kev Healy at Palmettos, yeah. and Kev's a really good guy and really knowledgeable and that sort of thing. 
Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was good. But I actually had a friend, Robin Beecher, who was working at Southport. And I just didn't think neck. I just, I wasn't sure what direction we were going with Kev. And this is where, you know, from a business point of view and business being my game, shooting scores. Um, so I went to Benny and I went there with a, it's, I'm the hardest person in the world to teach because I believe I've got a pretty good knowledge of the golf swing and that sort of thing. But I went there and just let him say what he had to say and what he, what he said, I really liked. So that's where it started. And mate, he is, um, he's, he's like Kev, he's, um, like Kev Morley was, mate, I could ring him now and talk golf and he'll answer my call. So there's not too many golf pros. And like he sits there at night, if I'm talking about something, he'll Google it and see how many guys are doing it. And Matty knows all this. He's, he's, mate, he's into it. And he, he is an absolute asset to, um, to Southport. Absolute asset. Awesome. And what about uh, Matty McLean there? You look like you're busting to say something. Yeah, have a look at him. Come on, I've got nothing. Oh, haven't you? Oh, come no. on. So, Matty, you're at is, Southport um, as well, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I work in the shop at Southport. Mm-hmm. All you know is what? <laughs> All I know is Benny's still trying to find a video of someone with a shorter leg like you, Jeffro, that putts like you. <laughs> a shorter <laughs> leg, a short left leg. Jeffro thinks he putts bad because he's got a short left leg. Some Someone... <laughs> When I come through the conveyor belt of life, when it was when it was all happening, all right. Some people get looks, some people get brains. I got neither. All right. I fell off the edge of the conveyor belt. My left leg went. My hip went. Um, I banged my head on the way down. Um, it's uh, yeah. Well, it's not easy. I'm, as I said, my left leg is about fourteen millimeters shorter than my right. So, uh, the only, you know, a person I know who's got similar, Greg Chalmers. I don't know if any of you boys have noticed Greg when he walks. Um, I actually spoke to him about this and Titleist Footjoy actually make him shoes with a bigger inner sole. But I'd be a perfect left-hander. I should have been a left-hander unless you... Yeah, I've seen you play left-handed and there's no chance. No, no. You should be left-handed. I've seen no, you. no. You're worse no. than me, which is saying something. No. <laughs> I, I'm comfortably one of the worst left-handed players you'll see. Or it could be the it could be the the gator rage we have in a way right. around. Matty Guy, have you got anything you want to? Um, yeah, in there? just on, just Jeffro talking about his um, all his almonds there. Jeffro, I've got a question for you. Who's the longest? Who's the longest that you've ever seen on tour from tip to tip in arm span? <laughs> well, first of all, can I answer that, Matty? Are you actually driving somewhere, or are you just driving around the neighbourhood to get out of the house because it's been locked down and the kids are driving you crazy? Is that what, what's happening? No, just... I I actually was at work tonight, and I can tell you now, Jeffrey, you were talking about the golf industry before. If Golf Central tonight is any indication, we'll be fine. But I've never seen a video. It is ridiculous at the moment. I got to back um, you up there, Matty. Emerald Lakes was nuts today, this afternoon, oh, this evening. Yeah, insane. So, yeah, Jeff, I'm just driving home. But go back to the question, mate. <laughs> well, I once again, the conveyor belt. Not only did I get a shorter left leg than right leg, but I've got, I've got a wingspan on me. Um, I don't know if you've heard that. This, if you hold your arms out both ways, is your height. Um, and if you're a, if you're a specimen. So if you're, I don't know, I'll throw a, a couple of names out. If you're a, a Peter Weldon or a Michael Simmer or a Paul <laughs> Williamson, that's probably go. reigns, reigns true. But for me, I'm about 5'11", but my my wingspan is about 6'5". Yeah, which I tell you what. So I've, it's I've unbelievable. Idea. And I'm, I bring that up all the time. My follow-up question to that, Jeffro, is then when you've got one short limb... And six foot five wingspan. What length golf clubs do you use? I use standard length golf clubs. I know that sounds strange. I actually have tried shorter clubs, but it didn't. It didn't work. I lost a club. So basically, all you got to do is get to the top, throw your right knee at the ball, <laughs> all right, get ahead of it, but then flip your right hand at it, hard at the ball. <laughs> that's all. That's all you got to do. So if you can do that, you'll be fine. I think I've got some. I think I've got some footage somewhere where that that arm, that wingspan of yours, really, um, really sort of 
It was on the 11th tee. It really effective. 11th tee at Cairns Eye, I think. The Cairns Eye Open. Well, that sounds like a story. Come on, we've got to share that one. Well, the tee market. Oh, you kind of got to see. Yeah, the tee. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find the video. I was going <laughs> to say that the tee markers were, were quite a way back this, this uh, particular practice round, and Jeffro was blowing up at it that his wingspan, he wasn't able to have a proper practice swing behind the ball. And, and, uh, and so he just teed the ball up, I think, a little bit too close to the. the um, actually, no, he just had his practice swing there, and he just reached out and had this giant hedge, beautifully manicured, as you can imagine, in Japan. And Jeffro just, you know, deliberately got a bit too close and had a practice swing with driver and dismantled half the hedge in his practice <laughs> swing. And was shrapnel flying <laughs> everywhere. It was unbelievable. It was very, very funny. Oh, dear. Uh, you've brought up a good point, Matty, though, because I've got to tell you this, Jeff, uh, that I use you regularly in a story I tell to my clients about the importance of um, club fitting. I told you I forgot my pants. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that I tell them that you're only just fractionally shorter than me. I'm 6'1". And yep. if we stood side by side, our arms are nowhere near the same, like your wingspan there. And if I tried to swing anything like you, it would be just horrendous. And I imagine if you tried to swing anything like me, it'd be horrendous. But can I ask you this? So you've got very long arms. Your hands are down really low. But the thing I notice when I watch you swing and hit is that it looks like you've got uh, your arms just hanging down from your shoulders, straight down almost. Very low. Yep. Right? Ape-like. Yeah. Yep. Pretty orangutan, I think, was the... Nickname we had, wasn't it? Yes, yes, Red yes. Red and long is, arms. This, I, I like where this call's going. It's really gone. It's, it's really gone, it's a, good, gone well. a good tangent. One other thing I want to ask, though, on a more technical note, what lie do you have on your eyes? What kind of lie angle? Like two degrees up. Two oh, degrees yeah. up? Even yeah. though you've got your hands down that low, what it looks like, you still have two degrees because, up. Because you look at my action, I yeah. actually back up yeah. massively. I back up to... Um, and that's why I use standard length clubs. I come into the ball and then I actually stand up, stop rotating and flip my hands up. Yeah, so, I, so standard I stand length up and two and, degrees up, right? Yeah, yeah so, so my, my hands are high when I hit it. When you hit it. And that's, that's what yeah. I wanted to say to a lot of people out there who might think that, you know, dynamic, that static fitting is okay, that you can go in a shop and just pick something off the shelf and go, oh, it's about that and my arms are this length and that. Just, yeah. It's just not the case. It's not even close to the case. No, no, no. You've you yeah. got to get, get your clubs fitted. Because if you, you looked at you at setup, you t I would sit there. If you just looked at setup static, you go, "I oh, need like four degrees flat." Yeah, but you're yeah. too up. So that's really good. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, mate. I might we might call it at that. I reckon. But I'm just going to okay. go over some of the topics we talked about wedge play and how you can judge distance better. You use percentages, don't you? Right. Yeah. I talked yeah. about nerves, and I like the fact that you get nervous. Uh, I think Nicholas used to say that he gets nervous. And if he stopped getting nervous, he was getting worried because then it wouldn't mean anything to him. It's yep. good. I like that. Um, I like the fact that you were fourth in ball striking after two rounds of a British Open, but you missed the cut. I, don't, I mean, I don't like that, but I like the fact that it probably emphasises that that inside 100 metres, inside 50 metres is more important than ball striking. I've done a lot of work on my putt. I'm putting better than I have in my whole career at the moment. So it. uh, it's massively important. Yeah. Um, we've also discussed how drunk you got over Adam Scott. Um, Laurie Montague, yeah, you brought it was, up Laurie. It wasn't, it wasn't blackout drunk, but it was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And Laurie Montague, I agree with you. I've, I haven't met Laurie, but I've watched him a lot over many years on, on the internet, and he is one of the most fantastic coaches I've heard talk in terms of long-term player development for elite-level players. And Mate, the, anyone that wants to learn something... something. Jump on in. Um, get, get in contact me and get, get, in talk with, get in contact with Laurie. I've dealt with a lot yep. of them. He is by far the best, by far. Grit and hanging in there has been the big secret to your career. Yep. Um, and then the other one just um, that you gave there, don't self-analyze. I love that. I'm writing yep. all that down. Yeah. So for anyone who's still on here, this is a call. Thank you to Jeffro, first of all, for your time, mate. I reckon we might... Um, oh, hello. <laughs> Uh, so, those of you who can't see this, is uh, that guy's found the photo of him ripping the hedge to shreds at the back. Of the... What's there oh, about? Oh, here we Maybe... go. Is it a video? Is it? It's it's unfolding slowly. Yeah, I see that. Uh, so the markers have been put. What about two club lengths from the hedge? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There and we go. Just... Straight. To... <laughs> do we do we see any of the hedge come out here? It's in slow mo. <laughs> 
It's not going yeah, yeah. that fast. We've got what a good idea the, on it. The divot, on, the divot in front of his right foot there, just behind the right foot. He took that first in his first practice swing, took a massive <laughs> fillet out of the fairway, out of the skew block, and then as it goes back, you'll see a bit of the shrapnel flying through the sky there. But I can't show a video. <laughs> I can't show a video on this format, so I've pulled the car over on the highway and off to the side and screenshot a few snapshots out of the video. So it's the best I can do, boys. But, geez, oh, I'll tell you what. There was many a time on tour when the great Steve Jeffress created a lot of humour for us. And I think it's one of, the great, <laughs> one of the great parts about tour life is the guys you travel with and the fun times you have. And, you know, there'll be times I don't, you know, I'll never forget the times that Jeffro and I spent up in Japan and travelled together with, him and the other boys, so uh, yeah, it's great fun. No, you, were, you nailed it there, Matty. I think yeah, so. no, it was, no, it was good. It was great. Yep, yep. Yeah, good work, Jeff Wraith, mate. Um, Matty, guy, I've spoken with you about possibly coming on. I know you've got a ton of stories. You're a good storyteller, too. I'd love to do something like this with you um, yeah, love sometime it. soon. Yeah. I, know you're working, I know you're working on Thursday nights, <clears throat> which is brilliant. That's great. We've got to be working in these times. It's great. But yeah, I'd love to get on there and have a chat with you. I know you've done a, Matty's done a podcast. You've just started as well. Look at what Matty Guy at Golf and Facebook and that, and you'll have all the links and things like that to your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. It's been good fun. I just uh, recorded episode three today with with T Twenty specialist Benny Dump. So um, it was a great hey. chat. Lots to learn from these guys. It's um, it's aimed at trying to help understand the difficulties and the challenges to become a leech in your chosen field, whether it's golf or, or other sports. We've got lots to learn as golfers from these guys as well. So. Um, yeah, it's been fascinating to chat to them and I've got a, a nice list of um, other guests lined up, so it's going to be cool. I love it. Um, thanks to the other guys who jumped on the call. Dave, Matt, you guys as well on the Zoom. Thanks to everyone who's jumped on Facebook. This you working tomorrow, been quite surprising. I love that. Matty's working tomorrow, yeah. yes. He's got the no, thumbs no, up No, 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 not that, Matty. Matty McLean. That's Matty helpful. McLean, yeah. Yeah, he's got the thumbs up for you there. He's in. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, but what you, you got anything else to finish on, Jeffrey? No, just uh, oh, uh, good work. Hopefully, um, uh, hopefully golf. Or well, hopefully, get back. Not just golf. Everyone gets back to normality soon. Uh, because I'm sick of painting. And um, um, That's what I'm yeah, just uh, <laughs> the the amateurs that you teach, mate. They're very lucky. You're 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 a student of the game, Donk, and um, you're respected and one of the, the highest highest respected golf pros out there. So uh, it's good that you do this. Oh, and, no um, worries. I'll make sure and, that all those well funds done. are in your account after that prize, mate. That's Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we <laughs> raise it from $12 perhaps? Is yeah. That... <laughs> I love it. So those who don't know, I've done Jeff for quite a while. <laughs> so yeah. a, and um, thanks for coming on, man, having a laugh, because I reckon that there's a ton of stuff out there that's um, pretty negative at the moment, like you're saying in the news and all that. And, the other yep. thing too, I think, is um, all our uh, inboxes in a swamp with how to fix that, how to fix that, and I think we just need to laugh a fair bit more at the moment. So that's yeah, I think we've yep, had a few yep, good laughs. Yep. We might even oh, get you back on that. again too, man, because I reckon you've got more stories. I, no, actually, I don't reckon. I know you've got more stories. I would say that any uh, yeah, um, your students that want to contact me or ask me a question or whatever, just you know, go on Facebook and just send me a question. That's, yeah, um, that's the other thing yeah, I was going to say, how yeah. they can get you. So Facebook, yeah, before I'm going to just send you a message. And yeah, just send me, send, me, send me a question yeah. through. Um, so that's Stepan um, Jeff Rice, was it? Stepan Jeffrey. <laughs> Stepan. Jeffrey. Spelt with a P and then, yeah, Stepan Jeff. Yeah, no, Stephen Jeffress, Australasian tour player, hole-in-one recipient, Trophy recipient, uh, Fiji International no, Drinks, mate. No houses. <laughs> no houses. Uh, good on you, mate. I will right. speak to you soon. I'm going to cut the meeting off. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next Thursday for another one. Right, on boys. See you, MG. See you, Matty. <laughs> see you, Dave. See, see you later, Jeffrey. Thanks, mate. Appreciate yep. it. Yeah, I hope, uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon, eh? Yeah, yeah mate, that'll be awesome. Look forward to it. That'll be really good. All right. See you, boys. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate it. CMG. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I, I liked him better when he was in the car. <laughs> oh, All, right. Good. All right. See you, boys. I'm shutting it off. See you. <laughs> All right. See you.